Welcome back to one of your boy Rump. I don't know if you hear it in my voice. I've been sick. I've been sick for the past few days. That's why I haven't uploaded lately. I usually upload about three gaming videos a week, and once a month we do something outside gaming. So this video I'm going to do right here is outside gaming. Uh, we're building a gaming PC, a gaming rig. The one I've got right here. I'm going to run you step by step through the process of how to build your gaming PC, how you can build your gaming computer. So awesome to build your own hardware, build your own gaming rig, and then start laying waste to all these servers and pub stomping. It's it's really a lot of fun. So the case we got here is an awesome some tempered glass case all around even the back of the case which is something we'll get into later that i wasn't too fond of but tempered glass all around rgb colored fans colored water cooler colored motherboard led lighting this is just one awesome build it was a lot of fun to do and so i'm gonna run you guys through the step by steps of how to do it let's get into the video <laughs> I'm not going to tell you how to pick the parts in this video for your PC because everybody's different requirements would be different. But I am going to tell you the different components that you have to have in your PC to make it work. You have to have a processor. That's the central processing unit of the PC or CPU, and it's referred to often as the computer's brain. You need the motherboard. That's that big circuit board that houses all the various components of your PC. You're also going to need random access memory or volatile memory, whatever you want to call it, and is used by the system to store data for processing by a computer's CPU or central processing unit. If you're here to build a gaming PC, you're going to want a powerful graphics processing unit. If you just want to build something for, I don't know, word processing or whatever, you may use onboard graphics, but here you want to use a graphics processing unit. You're going to need storage where memory and data can be stored, so you may want a hard drive, or I actually, I actually recommend a solid state drive for faster access to that storage of memory. You're going to need a power supply to actually power your PC and all the components inside, and you're going to need a case to tie it all together. You don't need a case as fancy as I have here. Any case will work and whatever you want to put together, you do not have to go all crazy and outland just like I did here, but it was something I wanted to do. Now you've gotten the case that you've chosen. What you want to do is take the sides, maybe even the top off of that case. You can get inside and start working and putting our hardware where it needs to go. One thing I do not recommend, as you see in this video, is I'm wearing a long sleeve sweatshirt due to electrostatic discharge. You do not want to do that, but I was just getting over being sick and I needed to stay warm. You do have things like a static wrist strap like I'm wearing here that you can wear to kind of shield yourself from damaging your components due to static electricity. This is our motherboard. You're going to take the motherboard out of the case. It's in a packaging to protect it from electric static discharge so leave it there that's our io shield and our sata data cables that we will be placing into our computer momentarily now that we've taken a look at these components the first thing we're going to install is our io shield our io shield is going to go on the back of the computer case with the audio port facing the bottom it clips right into place and it snaps right into place you'll know it's secure once you hear it click and you can pretty much run your fingers along the seam to make sure it's a solid even seal now we will insert our motherboard into our case. You may need to place standoff screws into your case beforehand depending on your motherboard or your case. This case, the standoffs came pre-installed. You want to place the motherboard into the case and then make sure it's a snug fit along the I.O. shield and make sure it snaps into place. Then we will place nine screws into the motherboard to connect it to the case itself. Make sure that when you place these screws into the motherboard, you screw them till they're tightened but do not over tighten because you can damage the motherboard. Now we're ready to install our CPU into the socket on the motherboard. To open up the socket, all you need to do is push the lever arm down to the side, then pull it up. Now it's open and ready for our processor. Open your CPU box and take the processor out. It's probably housed in a plastic sleeve. Remove it from the sleeve. Look at the processor and match the arrow on the bottom left corner with the bottom corner of the socket. The pins on the processor face down, so the plain silver side should be facing up. There's only one possible way to correctly orient the CPU, which makes it easy to install. The CPU fits into the socket, and you don't need to press down to force it into place. It doesn't snap in, it just rests on top of the pins. To finish the installation, simply lower the socket covering and push the lever arm back into place. Now we will install our memory or RAM sticks. Installing RAM will probably be the easiest thing you do on your PC build. The RAM slots are adjacent to the CPU socket. You'll see either two or four memory slots next to it. Make sure the memory module is correctly oriented. The notch in the bottom edge of the RAM must match up with the rise in the memory slot. If you're not filling all the available RAM slots, read your motherboard's manual to see which specific slots you should fill first. Placing RAM in the incorrect slots could result in some performance degradation or even a failure to post. Toggle the plastic retention clips open for the RAM slots you will use and gently press down on the memory sticks until it's seated in place with a click. 
Next, we will be installing our solid state and our hard drive in the respective holders on our case. On this case, the solid state drive and the hard drives are held up on the side. Next, we will be installing our power supply unit. In this case, the power supply unit is housed in the bottom of the case and it's secured by four screws. Make sure that when you insert your power supply unit, whether it be in the top of your case or the bottom of your case, make sure that the exhaust fan is not covered. Now we're going to feed the power connectors from the bottom of the PC out through the back towards the motherboard. We need one 24-pin connector and one 8-pin connector from the power supply unit to power our motherboard. Your power connectors and your motherboard might be different than what I have here, so make sure to refer to your manual. Now we will need to insert our SATA data cables into our motherboard and then we will connect them to our SSD and our hard drive. They work by transmitting data between our motherboard and those drives. We want to go back to our motherboard box, that's where we had our SATA cables, and we will insert them into our motherboard here. Your motherboard might again be slightly different, so refer to your manual. Now we will take a look at the cables that run from our case to our motherboard. Do not be intimidated by the stack of cables because sometimes there are a lot. Once you take these cables apart, they're each labeled to tell you exactly which slot they should go in. You can then take a look at your motherboard manual. It'll tell you exactly where each wire should go on the system panel connector. If your computer fails to boot or fails to power up after you hit the power button, one of these connections may not be in the correct place. Now we will install the water cooler for our processor. Normally I would recommend installing the processor cooler right after the processor is installed. On this build, however, the Kraken water cooling system has so many extra wires and so many extra power cables connected to it, I decided to do it after we've connected some of the system cables. The water cooling system already came with thermal compound in place, so there was no reason to add any extra. One thing to keep in mind after you've installed your water cooling or your fan system is to make sure you properly plug it into the correct plugs and the correct outlets on the motherboard. Normally, found next to the CPU socket is a CPU fan outlet labeled CPU fan. This is normally where the CPU fan or water cooler should be connected. Now one of the last but definitely not least things we want to put into this gaming PC is our graphics processor unit. The card that we're going to be going with is the GTX 1070 and we're going with the mini version. Still the same powerful card but in a smaller form factor. We're going to place this card in the PCI Express slot down below but before we can do that we have to remove two panels to then be able to place the card at the back of the PC. Once our card is inserted in the PCI Express slot we secure it with a screw. Now the last thing we need to do is manage our power cables and make sure that each one of our components is powered. So we're going to run a power cable from our graphics processor to our power supply unit, from our solid state drive, our hard drive, and from the fans to make sure that they each get power. And there you have it. I hope this video helped you really see how easy it is to build an awesome gaming machine and awesome gaming PC. Down below in the description, I'm going to leave a link for Tom's Hardware, which is a really good forum for builders and a really good place for you to get some more information. If there's something I didn't answer, if you have some questions, hit me up down in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. Here's two more videos.